Hello, everybody. Welcome to Late Night Football. Welcome to our episode four of our season preview series that we're doing for 2023-2024. And um, we're going to do today as, uh, two today as we did two yesterday. And I think the two today are probably the most difficult ones that I've had to do because not in terms of the fact that, you know, not in terms of the complexity of it, but I just think that um, it's today we're doing Liverpool and Chelsea. We're starting with Liverpool. And I feel these are two teams that I just can't get a reading on. I just don't know. It's going to be sort of blind predictions in some ways because I, because it almost feels like I'm blind, blind with them. But that being said, because because there's almost a sense of it's not final yet. Like whatever Liverpool squad is at the moment, and we'll start with Liverpool, of course, um, it just doesn't feel final yet. It feels um, incomplete. And when I say that, I mean, you know, you, when, you, when we ended the season with Liverpool last year, Liverpool had a poor season. Now, some people will die on the 7 0 you know, Manchester United and talk about that like it's a trophy. But at the end of the day, they didn't qualify for the Champions League. They came nowhere near challenging for the Premier League title or for the Champions League title. So, in, in many ways, that's the season was a failure. They won't even be in the Champions League this season. Um, and, you know, ultimately, big wins are great. But what people remember is achievements at the end of the season. They didn't achieve anything. So, from, and particularly coming off of what was a very good season, the the, the one before. So in, at the end of the summer, at the, at the end of the season, in the summer, I think there was a lot of people expecting, yes, there's going to be a lot of you know, changes. There's going to be some new faces that are going to come in, some long-serving faces are going to leave. And that's happened to a certain extent with Milner leaving, Firmino leaving, um, you know. Uh, but then the two players that probably shouldn't have left, Henderson and Fabinho, um, they probably, you know, most Liverpool fans and even Klopp had assumed they're going to stay another season. They're probably going to say one more season, give us at least one more year. But they both left as well. And now suddenly they were left having to do a midfield rebuild. Um, and to a certain extent, they brought in, uh, you know, Subosalai. They brought in McAllister. I thought McAllister and Subosalai are both are fantastic signings. And you just start to think, okay, maybe there's going to be more coming in. Maybe there's going to be a centre-back coming in. Maybe there's going to be, um, you know, another midfielder coming in. Now, Lavia, don't know what they're gonna have, what's going to happen with that. And like I always say in these videos, the caveat is we're going to go with the squad as is or what we feel is very, very likely to happen, but not, you know, speculation. And at the moment, Lavia is now in the category of speculation because don't know if it's going to actually end up in Liverpool. So we go with what we have. And in terms of what we have, Liverpool still feel a little bit light in midfield, a little bit light in, in defence. And therefore, even though they have a very good forward line with Nunes and um, Salah and Gakpo and Jota and Diaz, they still look a little bit light in that midfield and defence. And therefore, it's hard to get a reading as to where, where Liverpool actually could end up. Now, being in the Europa League does present some advantages. I mean, the Europe is very comp competitive now, but at least it should offer some more opportunity, a little bit more opportunities for rest than maybe the Champions League would have offered. So that would be a good thing from Liverpool's point of view. So they may not need to have as big of a squad. But that being said, um, can they challenge for a title with this team? I don't think they can. I, I don't think they'll be getting anywhere near Manchester City. Now, I've been proven wrong before about Liverpool, but I, I just don't see that happening. Um, I do see Liverpool, though, um, in the mix for the top four spots. I'm not going to say that they're not. I do see them in the mix for that. And I, I do feel that because they have, good, they have a good strike force on paper, at least, they do have an advantage over some of the other competitors because, you know, many of the, the, so the some of the, the rivals that we spoke about yesterday, particularly Arsenal United, don't have the strike force that Liverpool have. Um, maybe United have a better midfield. Maybe Arsenal definitely have a better defense. United may maybe United maybe have a be better midfield. Maybe, um, but I think uh, Liverpool have, have the better have the better strike force. So each one has their strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and and I think ultimately my prediction based completely on emotion and not logic because I've learned not to count Liverpool out and I don't like to count Liverpool out. I'm going to say they're going to finish fourth. I feel they're going to finish in the top four and they'll finish fourth. Now, this is not, again, I guess this is not based on any logic and irrational. It's just emotional. Um, I always feel like Liverpool, when you count them out, that's when they get become very dangerous. And to be fair, they came very close to finishing top four last year. So just a couple of big defeats towards the end that really kind of got them. But otherwise, they were pretty close as well. So I do think they will finish top four. Um, if there is a ray of hope for Liverpool fans, is that, you know, now... The rebuild that was supposed to maybe happen a year later has started a year earlier. And so it gives them a bit of a more of a blank slate to work with. If they can get a couple of good players in um, before the end of the transfer window in, in defense and midfield, that's a big if, by the way, um, then I think they've got a chance. They've got a chance of doing something good this season. I don't think they'll be able to achieve a lot, but at least they can achieve some of their primary, um, you know, basic objectives. Uh, for Klopp, I think it's a big season as well. I mean, he's obviously very revered at Liverpool. He's done very well. But I think last season, there were a few tactical missteps. Uh, partly, I think he was too, perhaps too loyal to some of the players and probably should have dropped them, um, which he didn't do. And so that kind of cost him towards the end. We'll see if he still keeps the faith with that. 
Um, you know, there are some tactical switches that have been made in preseason with, you know, uh, Alexander Arnold now playing as a hybrid wide back, wide wing back central midfielder. He's kind of experimenting with that, kind of experimenting with what Chelsea, with, with what Manchester City do in the 3 2 4 1. He's kind of trying to do the similar thing, um, you know, with the, but instead of using stones, he's trying to use uh, Alexander Arnold as his. Uh, as his midfield uh, go-to person. So that will be interesting to see how that shapes up. Um, I am excited uh, to see Alexis McAllister because of, you know he's, he's a fantastic player and they've got him for such a... That was such a good deal, by the way. Can we just talk about the fact that there was such a good deal to do and you really thought... And I think Liverpool might have set the bar high for themselves on that point because they got such a good deal at such a cheap price. And you all thought, and we all thought, and I'm guilty of that, I thought, wow, Liverpool have already started off with the bang and they'll get things done very, very quickly. And then they got Sobosla, which was also a good deal. But since then, I feel like Liverpool have just kind of gone stingy after that. Almost like... You know, the the deal to get McAllister is an exception. It's not normally how teams do deals. Um, you know, even City has splashed 100 million pounds or 100 million euros, sorry, on Guardiol. Um, they're likely to spend 70, 80 million pounds on Paqueta. That deal can get done. So those are the norm. This was an exception. I think they almost felt like this should be the norm for us. We don't want to overspend. So we're going to, you know, sometimes you in, a, in trying to not overspend, you can go the other way and start being stingy. And then Liverpool started being stingy instead of, you know, realizing that what they got from McAllister... Um, or what City did for Holland, those are exceptions. Those are not the norm. But that's something that they'll have to figure out. But after that, it was just pretty much nothing. They just didn't do a lot of good. De- they just didn't do any deals after that. So that is, I think, the frustration for Liverpool fans. Um, but like I guess I think it's a big deal for club. It's you know I'm excited to see McCall- McAllister. I'm excited to see Suboslai again, another player who's very highly rated when he was at Leipzig. How does he translate to the Premier League? How well can he do at this club? Will be interesting to watch. Like I said, they can get a good CDM. In there, Lavia, possibly, maybe somebody else. I think that is a good midfield. Now, that it's not a midfield that can play week in, week out, obviously. So, you need depth. But I think that's a good starting midfield to have. Um, with regards to defense, I think the big question mark will be on Virgil van Dijk. I am, you know, I feel like he's lost a big step since he got injured in 2020. Hasn't been the same player since. And I feel like there's a bit of a reluctance from, from many quarters in Liverpool. Maybe not the fans. But even in the media and other places, I think there's a reluctance to accept that Virgil van Dijk is not the player that he once was. There's still this, and, and it's a bit of a syndrome that it is with Harry Maguire, um, with uh, you know other players, other English, you know other players as well in the Premier League, where there's just this, 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 um, you know, this uh, conscious decision from the media to go right. We're not going to criticize this player. He's a good player. He's a good player. They just refuse to accept that the guy is not what he used to be. Same with uh, you know many other players as well in the past. Um, but. He has lost a step. Now, can he recover his form? Obviously, he can. Will he be able to? That's the question mark for the season. I think this is going to be exciting for him. He's also going to be the captain now. So, it's going to be that additional responsibility on him. Remember, Liverpool have lost a lot of leadership as well with Fabinho gone, Henderson gone, Milner gone. So, there, there will be other players who will need to step up. Salah, for example, will have to step up and take that leadership role as well. Uh, Firmino is well gone as well. So, there's, got a lot, there's a lot of experience that has left this team. Um, and that is going to be a key factor whether the others who you know have been sort of you know considered young players or you know molded players can they step up can Salah step up can Trent Alexander Arnold step up uh, to the plate can Diogo Jota step up to the plate I think those are the questions that will be looked at but uh, I mean that that's something that we'll have to wait and and watch uh, for me I think the, the player that I'm most excited about to see this season I I, I think it's, it's McAllister I'd like to see how well he does because he's, he did very well at Brighton he was very good I mean he was pretty much the reason why Argentina won the World Cup as well. So now it's a question of, you know, can he make that step up? Because it's one thing doing well seven games in seven games um, in the World Cup. is another thing doing very well at Brighton where you're playing one game a week, you know, maybe two, maybe sometimes you play two games a week. But to play at Liverpool where you're going to have to play two games, three games a week consistently, particularly with them being in the Europa League, there's going to be a lot of games. Can he make that step up? Can he consistently perform at a high level in a team like that where the demands are very, very high? I think that is going to be the critical factor. That is going to be the key factor for, for, for Liverpool. So... I'm excited to see him. But like I said, keeping all logic aside, emotionally, I think they will finish in the top four because Liverpool always managed to somehow pull a rabbit out of their hat. Um, will will that actually happen? I don't know. And, you know, we never know. Things can change. You know, maybe maybe they will get a world-class CDM in. Maybe they'll get another world-class defender in. And then suddenly, you know, we're talking, well, can, you know, and then suddenly top four doesn't seem like such a stretch. It, it seems like a stretch at the moment, but maybe it doesn't if you get good players in. So, one well, to watch out for. Let's see what happens. I am, I am, uh, I am intrigued to see. And they've got a big game against Chelsea to kick things off, and that's uh, you know always uh, 
always an exciting tie and, and will be a good gauge of, of what Chelsea of what Chelsea could be. So anyway, share your thoughts, of course, on, on Liverpool and what, what their prospects for the season are. I know a lot of people will probably think I'm, you know, overestimating and over oh, their their abilities, and that's fair, but I just I, I just I've been burned by Liverpool before and I don't want to take that risk. So I'm going with the top four finish for them. But share your thoughts, of course. Uh, do smash the like on this video if you enjoyed it, of course, and share uh with anyone that you you may want to if you do um and do subscribe to our channel on youtube follow us on facebook twitter instagram we always appreciate your support we've got one more coming up on chelsea after this one so not not right away but i'll take a bit of time but we'll do one more today for chelsea as well so stay tuned and get uh, and for that and you know if you subscribe you get notified as soon as that video drops so thank you so much for watching we'll see you again very very soon take care bye bye